We as United Methodists are striving for mental, physical, and spiritual well-being around the world. Jesus' mission on earth was inaugurated by healing. We understand that continuing Jesus' ministry of healing is an important part of living as disciples of Christ. Life-saving United Methodist Health Ministries are enriching the lives of people across the globe, from health clinics and food distributions to safe water sources and disease preventions. We are dedicated to this vital support of holistic well-being for all people. Mind, we are communities of hope that provide strength on the journey of healing as people face mental health challenges. Body, we unite in our quest for bountiful physical health so that our bodies can be instruments through which God can work. Spirit, we establish spiritual strength so that we're able to live as Christ asks us to live, helping our communities become places of love and grace. Join us as we empower abundant health around the world. Get involved by engaging in personal and community health ministries. Get inspired by stories from United Methodists committed to abundant living. Get connected by signing up for abundant health emails. And give generously to support ministry initiatives worldwide. Together, we can transform the world by nurturing mind, body, and spirit so that everyone can live life abundantly. yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties you together. You are one body and one Spirit, just as God also called you in one hope. There is one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. God has given us the gift of grace through Jesus Christ. God gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. God equipped us for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we all reach the unity of faith and knowledge of God's Son. God's goal is for us to become mature adults to be fully grown, measured by the standard of the fullness of Christ. By speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way into Christ, who is the head. The whole body grows from Him as it's joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up with love as each one does its part. Thank you, the laity of the United Methodist Church, for growing and building the kingdom in love. We are called to hold tight to words that bring life. We listen for the grace at work in everything, for good, for life. In all we say and do, 
we are learning what it means to be faithful as those called to serve and witness in deeds and words that heal and free. We have sinned against you and one another, Lord. We have not lived worshipfully, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our confession. We have not loved you wholly. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not lived worshipfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our confession. We have not denied ourselves and taken up our own cross daily. We have not lived worshipfully, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our confession. We have not loved kindest, pursued justice, or walked humbly with you. We have not lived worshipfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our confession. We have not shared the good news with our lips or in our lives. We have not lived worshipfully. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our confession. The saying is sure. 
If we confess our sins, God is merciful and just and forgives us our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 9 Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you. Dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Now I appeal to Yodia and Sintichi, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement, and I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they work hard with me, telling others the good news. They worked along with the Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 9. This is the word of our Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 22 verse 1 to 14. Parable of the Great Feast. Jesus also told them other parables. He said, The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them, The feast has been prepared, the bulls and fattened cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went their own way, one to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. The king was furious and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22 verse 1 to 14 
This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Naimbag nga aldaw, kada kayo amin. Magandang araw sa ating lahat. Good day, everyone. It is both an honor and privilege to be God's messenger today on this latest Sunday. I am truly humbled and grateful. Today's message is based on the theme, Rise Up and Remain Committed to Love's Teachings. Our scripture references are based on the lectionary readings today 
Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 14, Psalm 106, 1 to 6, 19 to 23, Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9, and Matthew 22 verses 1 to 14. In Exodus, of course, we know the story. This is when Moses went up to Mount Sinai para kunin ng sampung utos mula sa ating Diyos. At nawala siya ng matagal. It was gone for a very long time. At nainip ang mga tao. Usually, kapag nainip ang mga tao, they wanted to do something. Something that would be fun and something that would cater to their interests. That's why they asked Aaron to make a substitute God for them. And lo and behold, pumayag si Aaron, forgetting that he was already breaking some commandments of God. They wanted the substitute God who is tangible, someone who they can see. And of course, this bred to idolatry and immorality. When we have idols, it follows that we commit acts that are immoral. And when we do this, we become corrupted and stiff-necked. We cannot look at the other ways. What we see is just what we want. And in Psalm 106, King David recounted, despite everything that the Israelites did, God remained faithful to us, to the people. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9, we see here two women, Euodia and Syntyche. It's so ironic that Lady Sunday, on Lady Sunday, we had two women who had, probably, they have opposing ideas. Because Paul said, Timothy should help these two women to unite and agree, for they are both co-workers of Paul. And here, later, we will see the relations of these verses to the theme of this Lady Sunday. And of course, we will also be looking at Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, which is the parable of the wedding feast. This year's theme for Lady Sunday stems up or comes from the theme previously in 2021, Rise Up and Revive God's Gift, which was also found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. And in 2022, rise up and reveal God's grace. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 12. And this year, our Lady Sunday theme is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. 2 Timothy 1, 13 reads, What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Jesus Christ. That's from the NIV. And in CEB, we read, Hold on to the pattern of sound teaching that you heard from me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. With these verses, we have two points, two questions that we would like to answer. What does the love of Jesus Christ teach us? These images show the verses in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates His own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's in Romans 5, verse 8. And in Romans 8, 38 to 39, it says that nothing, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. And of course, the memory verse, the verse that everyone memorizes. God loved us so much that He gave us His only Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can be restored in a relationship with Him. That's in John 3.16. Therefore, what does this kind of love teach us? The love of God is redeeming. The love of God is forgiving. The love of God doesn't look at all the sins we have done. Kagaya ng ginawa niya sa mga Israelita. Despite 
making a substitute God. Pinatawad niya sila. He relented. Even when he was so angry, he wanted to punish them. But then Moses prayed in their behalf. Moses pled in their behalf. At anong ginawa ng Diyos sa kanila? Pinatawad nila. Pinatawad ng Diyos ang mga Israelita. Despite them being stiff-necked, God still forgave them. So what does, again, the love of Jesus Christ teach us? The love of Christ teaches us to be forgiving. And with that, we, we are led to the second question, which is the theme of this Lady Sunday. To remain committed to love's teachings. We have said that the love of God is a redeeming love, that the love of God is forgiving, that the love of God is unconditional. So how do we remain committed to love's teachings? We have always been told that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the next second greatest commandment is to love our neighbor just as we love ourselves. How do we remain committed to these teachings of being in love, of loving? Again, we go back. We are told and reminded let us remember that Timothy, that 2 Timothy is the last letter of Paul to Timothy. Kung baga, ito ang kanyang mga huling habilin. Ito ang kanyang mga tagubilin dahil alam niyang siya ay babalik na. Siya, iiwanan niya na si Timothy, iiwanan niya na ang lahat. And meron siyang mga huling habilin. Ano ang habilin ni Pablo kay Timoteo? At hindi lang kay Timoteo ito, kundi kahit sa ating lahat, sa ating mga mananampalataya sa panahong ito. Hold on to the pattern of sound teaching that you heard from me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Keyword here is to hold on. When we hold on, we are committing. And we look at the pattern of sound teaching. Now, what is the sound teaching? Sound teaching is the love, the kind of love that Jesus gave for us. And the faith and the love. And of course, again, with this, we go back to the letter wrote, written by Paul to the Philippians. Three points here that we should look at. United, the Christians should be united. Nakita natin si Yuwoja at si Sinteki. Meron, of course, hindi sasabihin na magkasundo sila kung wala silang problema sa isa't isa. Probably, meron silang hindi pinag-agrihan. And we, based on researches, these two women are women leaders in the church at Philippi. And Paul was telling them to be united and to reconcile with each other. And he was also asking Timothy to help them to be reunited because they are his co-workers. So madalas, pwedeng hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan, meron tayong pagkakaiba-iba ng mga opinion. But then, as we say, we agree to disagree. But in the end, we still become united. Paul was telling the church at Philippi to be united just as he is telling us all to be united. Huwag na nating pansinin yung mga bagay na maliliit, trivial. In the sound teaching, we refer to the doctrines. What are the main doctrines of our church? Let's just hold on to the main doctrines. Huwag na nating pagtalunan ang mga bagay na hindi naman na natin dapat pagtalunan because they do not really affect the doctrines and the beliefs that we have. Second is, we have to be joyful. In these verses, Paul was telling us to rejoice always. And last point is in prayer. In prayer, let me share this with you. This is a diagram by Dr. David Jeremiah which sums up 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. There are three circles here. The first circle is worry. And we must have nothing to worry about. So when it comes to worry, we should not put anything in the worry circle because there is nothing that we should worry about. The next circle is the circle of prayer. Here, we are asked to put everything in the circle of prayer. And the third circle is gratitude. We must be thankful for anything. As Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We have been given a blueprint, a manual of instruction actually, on how to hold on. Paano tayo magiging matibay sa ating commitment to love's teachings? We are to be united, joyful, and always in prayer. And the verses in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 14, talks about the parable of the wedding feast. While talking about our prayers, uh, the circles, the word circle, the prayer circle, and the gratitude circle, we have been told earlier that we are to be united, we are to be joyful, we should be always be in prayer. The parable of the wedding feast reminds us that not everyone who has been called have been chosen. To be chosen, we must have the wedding garment. If we look at the parable, the invitation was extended to everyone. But then, there are protocols that must be followed. And one thing, one of the protocols needed was the wedding garment. And in this parable, the wedding garment refers to the righteousness of Christ, accepted by grace through faith. Again, we go back to salvation by grace through faith. Lastly, and to be concluding this message for every one of us, to be in love is a life-changing decision. And to remain in its teachings is a lifelong commitment. To participate in the great feast of God, one must not only be invited, but also put on the king's wedding clothes, the righteousness of Christ, accepted by grace through faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, truly, on our own, we cannot hold on to your teachings. Help us to hold on only by faith and by grace as we continue to put our hope only in you. That, help, that you help us to become united and joyful and always in prayer. Father, we commit everything to you. We surrender everything to you. Whatever we have heard today, Father, help us nurture it in our hearts as we give back to you all the glory and the thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.
laity. If you're not familiar with the term, nope. I said laity, not lady. Ah. Why, why would we be doing a Check Those Church episode about ladies? I don't know anything about that. Can we, do you mind if I just get back to talking over? You just, and I'll be, get back on your break. Do what you need to do. Uh, laity means all those who are not members of a given profession or other specialized field. In this case, those who are not clergy. The rest of us are uh, lay people, like you. You are laity. You, no, I did not call you a lady. I said you're laity. Seriously, what are you? What do you even do here? You know what? We're talking about laity on this episode of Chuck Knows Church. You, why are you here? There is a long history of recognizing the contributions of the laity. Since Methodism first arrived in America, the laity have taken care of the local church. Back then, for example, uh, it was holding down the fort, awaiting the arrival of the Methodist circuit riders. Now fast forward to today, and lay people are integral to the daily ministry of the church, uh, the workplace, the home, simply everywhere in the community. The Methodist archives show the earliest recorded observance of Laity Sunday as uh, something called Layman's Day. Now, the first Layman's Day was in the Methodist Episcopal Church South in 1929. And it wasn't until the 1972 edition of the United Methodist Church Book of Discipline that Layman's Day was renamed. It finally became the gender neutral Laity Sunday. That's a nice ring, I think, Laity Sunday. Laity Sunday is a time to recognize the work and mission of all laity, uh, celebrated the third Sunday of October, not only within the walls of the church, but everywhere, every day of our life. Now, as the whole body of Christ, we must seek to become more vital congregations who make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to ask your pastor. Tell them Chuck sent you. When the world seems full of shadows, when fear and anxiety rise up within, find the road back to peace with these five tactics. Connect, talk to someone, a friend, therapist, pastor, or family member. Pray, God wants to hear from you, to surround you with love, unload your burdens. Breathe, pause, breathe deeply, relax, and let go of all that's out of your control. Move, head outside for a walk, or stretch away your tension. Create, what brings you joy? Do it, write, draw, craft, cook, build. There's no shame in struggling, only reasons for reaching out. Don't be afraid to ask for help and try new ways to regain your true self again.